Okay. Yeah. How's that even a question? I don't know. How does that make somebody? In Canada? That they're saying that they're saying that. Oh, no, like not, not, but, um, how do I say this? That's the book. I mean, there could be that earth. I don't know if I It was uh, or something like that. Basically, that's the exact thing I thought of. Yeah. And they're like, no, it's uh, it was all the information. Probably all the information now. Okay. All right. A uh, couple of things to think about. Uh, finals going to be week of May 6th. Um, probably that Tuesday. So probably May 7th or so. Uh, it's going to cover two, three chapters that we have covered. Um, so three is going to be in this one as well. So we won't have a, a test over chapter three. It's just going to be, I'm just going to put it in there. Uh, chapter 20 as well, I guess. Um, so you'll see a lot more of chapter three and chapter 20 in this. I'll probably, probably will pick 10 questions from chapter two, five, 17 and 19 each. So it'll be at least at least 60 to 75 questions on that. Another part of the final, uh, you're gonna draw one med of uh, musculoskeletal, one med of nervous systems, one med of a cardiovascular. You're gonna describe it. I'll, I'll have a rubrics out on Monday as to how I want it. And you're gonna create your own med as to what it, uh, indications it's going to treat. So, I mean, if you got something that, uh, you know, uh, can cure cancer or cure migraines or cure whatever you feel like, you know, the world needs. So we'll have a rubric on that. Uh, chapter 17 needs to be due by Friday. Uh, we will have a, a quiz on, over chapter 17 next week. So that's uh, chapter uh, nervous system meds on that. Uh, chapter three is going to be due needs to be done uh, by next uh, by next week. Oh, uh, your lab uh, on chapter three, your labs you can find help on the labs on page seventy through seventy three in your book. You should be able to find some uh, help with that. Other than that, uh, we're down. We're rolling down here now. This is the last of uh, it. Three weeks is almost up. You have not taken that chapter five uh, test by by the three weeks. Then I won't change it. So you're going to take it twice. You need to change the grade. Do it before the three weeks is up. <laughs> Um, just a refresher on chapter 20. Again, I'm not going to be too concerned on the anatomy or anything like that. Uh, but do understand when we deal, when we are uh, talking about renin, uh, it's dealing with the kidneys. The kidneys kind of, kind of help out the heart in eliminating waste. 
and uh, keeping uh, keeping us from swelling up as well. So they, you know, if you have somebody that's, uh, if you've known somebody that's had a, or going through dialysis, that kind of coincides with any kind of heart uh, failure or heart disease. Uh, regulation of the heart and vasculature, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic branches of autonomic uh, nervous system have opposite effects on the heart rate. Uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine released uh, during exercise increases heart rate. So this is why they inject you with uh, epinephrine uh, whenever you they feel like your uh, your heart rate is very low and uh, they'll inject you with epinephrine just to keep, keep that heart rate going. Uh, blood pressure is force exerted by blood against the inner walls. Uh, again, there's a lot of uh, medications for to treat blood pressure. Uh, cardiac output uh, increase means increase uh, blood pressure and flow. Increased blood volume may uh, cause increased blood pressure. So. Uh, then we jump to peripheral resistance, uh, resistance to blood flow due to blood viscosity and amount of force needed. Again, this is dealing all dealing with atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis and the closing of the uh, your uh, arteries. Uh, vasoconstriction uh, is decreased blood vessel diameter. Vasodilation is increased blood vessel diameter. So vasoconstriction, your your blood vessels tighten, va vasodilation, they loosen up. Uh, hormones in, are important in regulating blood pressure. Uh, in low pressure, kidneys release renin. Uh, enzyme reactions create angiotensins too. Uh, hormones increase sodium and water retention in kidneys. Um, Again, uh, we have a, a medications for uh, edema and for uh, water retention. Uh, just in case your kidneys uh, are not flushing out your system as, as it should. Uh, fluid retention leads to increased blood volume and renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Again, renin angiotensin aldosterone system is all dealing with the kidneys and the heart. All right, um, common medication classes used to treat cardiac uh, conditions, uh, a way to remember the, these some, some types of uh, drug class is for, from the mnemonic A, B, C, D. Letter A is for angiotensin converting enzyme. Uh, for ACE inhibitors. Uh, B is for beta blockers. Uh, C is for calcium channel blockers, and D is for diuretics. Uh, the ACE inhibitors, they reduce blood pressure by dilating the arteries, and they usually end in PRIL. So you have the Sinopril and Alapril. I believe there's Benazapril. Uh, so anything that ends in Pril should automatically think ACE inhibitors or uh, the angiotensin converting enzymes. Let's see. Ang angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists, also known as angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Um, way to remember that, uh, they're called ARBs, and they end in A-R-T-A-N. ARBs uh, end in, well, I have S A R T A N. They uh you have those sartin, those sartin and uh what else? Ganda sartin, I believe, but they also all treat uh blood pressure. So another uh suffix to remember is sartin, and they are coincided with uh, ARBs. Uh, <clears throat> common medication classes used to treat cardiac conditions. Uh, another one is beta blockers. Again, they block norepinephrine and epinephrine, which reduces heart rate. And the suffix for that, they end in OL, OL. So you have metoprolol. Uh,
intake of the heart, which decreases uh, blood pressure due to vasodilation. And there's no, no real way to remember calcium channels than memorizing the meds. Uh, there's no uh, suffix, infix, or prefix for that. Conditions affecting the cardiovascular Cisco system. Uh, heart conditions include hyperlipidemia, hypertension, myocardial infarction or heart attacks, uh, prehypertensive uh, state, and thrombosis. Uh, hypertension is uh, persistent high blood pressure. Uh, it's a silent killer. There are no obvious signs of its uh, presence. Uh, as a result of various factors such as disease, heart or kidneys not working properly, causing edema. And uh, risk factors include genetics, age, gender, race, lifestyle, diet, anxiety, alcohol consumption, alcohol consumption and sodium intake. And that's another one with salt, you know, I mean, what's too much salt, what's not enough salt? Because you need salt to kind of survive too. Uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. Uh, the systolic is more than 140. Uh, something per mercury, millimeters per mercury, I believe. Um, diastolic readings, uh, three categories of hypertension. Uh, systolic readings, two categories of hypertension. Four-step approach is uh, based on severity of the condition. Uh, diet with or without medication is leading to contributions of hypertension, include high, uh, food high in fat and sodium uh, tyramine. Uh, tyramine, some foods that have tyramine are like your wine, your cheese. So um, those will increase your, uh, your lipids or your cholesterol. Uh, again, uh, coincide uh, lipids and cholesterol together, you know, they, they're just hand in hand. Uh, to reduce hypertension, reduce salt and alcohol intake, exercise, and quit smoking. Uh, treatment of hypertension, the main agents are antihypertensives. You have methyl, methyl dopa, doxazosin, clonidine, terazosin, and prazosin. So those are all antihypertensives. Uh, other agents are diuretics and vasodilators. Um, again, you have loop diuretics. A loop diuretic is your furosemide. They deplete you from a lot of your potassium that you need in your body. And if you uh, deplete it from potassium, you become lethargic, you become weak, I get out of bed, um, could, could, could affect your kidneys. And then you got your thiazides, diuretic, diuretics, which are like your hydrochloric thiazide. They're somewhat potassium uh, uh, sparing diuretics. They don't uh, release you of all your potassium. Uh, so keep those in mind. Again, diuretics are, are your water pills. They'll make you urinate. They'll make you sweat. Um, so keep in mind of those. Uh, they do have aid in um, anti or they aid in hypertension. Other age, uh, if medication required, diuretics are initial drug therapy. Other agents are ACE inhibitors, which is in uh, Pril, beta blockers, which is in OLOL, and your calcium channel blockers. You also have hypotension, which is low blood pressure, uh, their orthostatic hypotension, well, that's a form of a disease. Uh, standing up quickly uh, from lying position. Uh, the side effects are syncope or fainting or vertigo or dizziness. Um, treatment, medication adjustment is increased uh, salt intake. Uh, drink more water and move or stand slowly. Uh, some drug treatments are fludocortisone, which increases blood volume, and mitodrine, which raises blood pressure. Hyperlipidemia, 
Uh, again, this is dealing with cholesterol, uh, increase of lipids in the bloodstream, uh, precursor to at atherosclerosis. Uh, as a purpose of cholesterol, uh, vital for making steroid hormones and cell membranes. Uh, ingestion of high fat foods, uh, like too much cholesterol and fatty acids, uh, the body cannot eliminate. And fatty substances uh, float through the bloodstream, latch onto large arteries and uh, middle-sized arteries of the heart and the brain, and the body cannot eliminate these. Uh, more on hyperlipidemia, uh, generic test given for cholesterol levels. If you have low hyperlipidemia, low is below 200 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, borderline high is 200 to uh, 239 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, high would be considered as 240 milligrams per deciliter. Um, you have LDLs, which, which are your low density lipoprotein, HDLs, high density lipoprotein. Uh, very low density lipoproteins are VLDLs, and that's a precursor to, uh, to a low density lipoprotein. Uh, drug treatment for hyperlipidemia, uh, antihyperlipidemics, that's a drug class. Um, they are bile acid sequestrants, um, hydro, uh, hydroxy, methyl, glutaryl, uh, coenzyme A. So uh, again, this is a uh, drug class, HMG, COA. They usually end in statins and they treat cholesterol. Um, Statins raise uh, your HDLs and lower your LDLs and VLDLs. Niacin added to other drug therapies. So niacin is used to treat uh, cholesterol. Coronary artery disease uh, is associated with atherosclerosis. Uh, it's a buildup of lipids or cholesterol in the arteries. Ather, ather, Atherosclerosis is linked to uh, high blood pressure, uh, fatty deposit uh, buildup, thrombus forms, and arteries are uh, blocked, results in myocardial infarction or a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, nitrates, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and bile acid sequestrants are used uh, for coronary artery disease. Uh, risk factors for coronary artery disease, uh, hypertension, age, gender, race, genetics, uh, factor alterations, fatty diet, uh, no exercise, uh, smoke. Those are all risk factors. And angina pectoris is a tightening of the chest. Uh, there's three types. You have your classic, you have variant, and you have unstable angina pectoris. Uh, classic angina is a short ischemic episodes of pain and mild deficiency of oxygen. Uh, the pain would be in the chest, the neck, the arms, the teeth, and the jaw. Can occur after exercise or excessive activity. And decreased blood uh, flow to the heart results in chest pain uh, and minor, which is minor to severe. Uh, more on angina pectoris, uh, this one's variant ang angina, which are spasms of the coronary artery. Uh, they're very painful and may occur even at rest. Unstable angina is a history of anginal attacks or history of chest tightening. Uh, you have obstruction of arteries and increase, increases, uh, which increases over time. Some treatments of angina pectoris. Common agents include nitrates, which is your nitroglycerin or your uh, isosorbide uh, dinitrate or mononitrate. Uh, calcium channel blockers also aid in angina and beta blockers, which in an OL, OL. Men say in an OL, OL. Uh, most uh, prescribed are nitroglycerin, uh, sublingual tablets. And the, these, uh, those um, 
nitroglycerin is not um, childproof. It's one of the exceptions to uh, the childproof uh, protection that we have on uh, opening uh, the caps and stuff like that. Uh, dosage forms for nitroglycerin includes capsules, topical patches, paste, and sublingual sprays. Sublingual tablets and injectable forms used in emergency only. Uh, other treatments are to change your lifestyle or surgery to bypass the blockage. So that would be a bypass of the heart. You know, they'll they'll take a a vein from the leg and they'll uh, bypass the clogged artery uh, and insert it in the heart. Uh, thrombotic events, uh, formation of a clot block, blocking blood flow is, thro is thrombosis. Uh, subclots are bad, overactive clotting uh, mechanism. Uh, an embolus is a clot broken away from the thrombus and uh, lodged and creating a blockage. Uh, treatment, supportive stockings, regular standing and walking to, facil to facilitate circulation. And that's mainly, you know, stockings with, uh, um, like there's long socks for your, for your uh, legs and feet. Uh, drug treatment, anticoagulants or thrombolytics. Anticoagulants like warfarin interferes with vitamin K synthesis, which uh, prevents from clotting. Um, myocardial infarction and transient ischemic attack. Blood flow is entirely blocked because of the, of the thrombus, uh, results in death of that part of the heart. Massive infarction permanently weakens the heart. Uh, some treatments are cardiac rehab, dietary changes, beta blockers, and ACE inhibitors. Um, transient ischemic attack. <clears throat> also known as TIA. Um, they last for short periods of uh, reduced oxygenation to, uh, to the brain and can last a few minutes or occur through, throughout the day. Uh, some treatments uh, reduce risk factors. That reduce risk factors are antiplatelet medications, anticoagulant, and surgery. Uh, some antiplatelets are like your aspirin and uh, clopidogrel or Plavix. Anticoagulants are your uh, warfarin, um, what else? Uh, Enoxaparin, um, heparin. Those are anticoagulants. Now, uh, dealing diseases on arrhythmias, uh, irregular irregular heartbeats or dysrhythmias. Um, some people um, have pacemakers uh, placed on the SA node, which uh, causes the electric current that keeps your heart. Uh, beating. Chemical or oxygen imbalance influences pacemakers, uh, resulting in dysrhythmias. Uh, Short-term treatments are going to the emergency room. Long-term treatments, uh, you have to uh, take some medications for it. Uh, drug treatments of four arrhythmias are agents or work on conduction system to induce the regular heartbeats. Lidocaine is used in emergency situations after a myocardial infarction and other conditions. Lidocaine, for the most part, just numbs the area. Uh, quinidine sulfate, procainamide, uh, they decrease the, the speed of the conduction system, so it slows down the heart rate. And is used for tachycardias or other arrhythmias. Uh, heart failure uh, is a progressive disease and there's no cure for it. Uh, heart cannot pump vigorously, uh, delivers less uh, blood throughout the body. Uh, some complications are edema, which the kidneys retain more fluid, and the heart works. You see this a lot with uh, people with dialysis or diabetics take care of themselves, do not um, take their uh, medications regularly, 
um, you, you'll find that, you know, that a lot of diabetics and people in dialysis uh, die at a younger age as well because they don't take care of themselves. Uh, most common treatments are cardiac glycosides uh, like digoxin and diuretics like your furosemide or hydro hydrochlorothiazide for edema uh, for swelling. Uh, diuretics used for the heart, uh, heart failure or related or related edema. Again, thiazide, uh, loop diuretics like furosemide. Uh, large potassium loss in the urine. Uh, potassium supplements. Uh, when uh, when you're taking a loop diuretic, you're gonna also gonna be taking a potassium supplement for that because of so much uh, potassium loss. Uh, diuretics given with agents to decrease effects of the sodium retention. An example for, for this one is a thiazide diuretic or uh, hydrochlorothiazide. And uh, look at the uh, abbreviation for hydrochlorothiazide is HCTZ. So anytime that I say HCTZ, um, I'm referring back to hydrochlorothiazide. Um, potassium sparing diuretics are triamtrine with hydrochlorothiazide. All right, that's the end of that review for the uh, chapter 20 cardiovascular medications. Um, can I put up the lab? Yeah. So uh, if you have not finished up chapter 17 to get that in, chapter three needs to be turned in by next week. We'll have a quiz over chapter 17 next week. Uh, finals are going to be the week of May 6th. They'll cover chapters 2, 3, 5, 17, 19, and 20. And we will be doing somewhat of a drawing of a medication over musculoskeletal, uh, one over nervous, one over cardiovascular, and you're going to create a med of whatever indication you want to for it to treat. Uh, and I'll give you a rubric on Monday for that. That's going to be due by the end of uh, April. So um, we're on the downhill with everything, uh, need everything turned in. Uh, by the first, at least the first week of May, or at least get er everything or mostly turned in by the first or second week of May there. All right. I'll go over short answer on Friday on chapter 20. And I know that you're not going to be here tomorrow.
Everybody got a medication for chapter 20? The patient is on vacation. On patient on vacation. What's that? Uh, no, you don't. 